Welcome to the Blue Cafe, we bring you stories of faith, love, and devotion. Yeah, just kidding, please help us grow by hitting that like button. Now on to the story. Ita for telling my ex-wife I don't care if she and her family starve that I am just responsible for our sons. I have two sons ages 16 and 14 with my ex-wife. Our marriage reached a bitter end when I learned she had remained married to me for over three years so I would support her through returning to school so she could switch careers to an even better paying one, despite her old one paying as much as mine. For years I tried like hell to save our marriage because I felt it fracture. She played along until she got what she wanted and then she was honest that she had never wanted to save our marriage and had been over me for years. When we divorced custody was set to 50 50th our boys and she was ordered to pay child support to me because she was making so much more after her change of career and education. She remarried a year after our divorce and had more children. After the birth of her last child four years ago things got bad. Her husband was diagnosed with cancer, then one of her kids got diagnosed with a long-term medical condition, then Covid impacted her job. Our boys would tell me how rough things were at their moms and how they wanted to live more with me, so I went to court and the judge moved her down to every other weekend and changed the child support order to reflect her decrease in custody. Recently she had to move into a smaller house because of how badly they were struggling and then she came to me for help after the courts refused to end the child's support payments. She told me I needed to help her and that I should be helping to take care of my boy's family, and that's what she and her family are. I told her she used me for three ducking years so she could survive off my money, she did not get to ask me for more, to support a family that is not my own. She called me a selfish asshole told me her family is living off charity and they could be so much better off if I would help them. I asked her why I was supposed to care. She told me she wished she had cheated while we were together and that using me for money wasn't enough. Again she told me about her family and how they would starve. I told her I didn't care if they did or not. That none of them are my problem and I only care about my kids. She called me an asshole. Her husband sent me a text that night saying I was a cruel asshole and he hoped the boys would hate me when they realize I want their whole family to suffer. Ita? NTA, but make sure you have a high level conversation with your boys so that they're prepared for your ex and her husband to try to paint you as the root of all evil when they go over there. In addition to this, keep all communications written so that they can be presented in court, if necessary. Good luck to you and your kids. Yes, adding to this to keep his side civil as in, set firm boundaries, but leave out cussing and insults. Probably will look better in court that way. Always be professional when it comes to court stuff. If you are reasonable and articulate the courts absolutely will look at that with favor. They want people to try to solve their issues and be reasonable. The court should be the arena of last resort and if it looks like you did everything to avoid it then it makes you look way better. She further insults him while trying to get him to give her money. Where's the logic? I can only imagine what she tells her kids about him. I honestly nearly laughed at the part where she said she wished she cheated and then backpedaled and did the poor us thing again. Yeah I bet she wishes she had cheated on op, with someone with more money than the man she's with now. Her tossing that out there actually makes me suspect she probably did, woman shrugging. Story 2 On my way to work with no sleep, hours after finding out about my wife's emotional affair because I'm broken and don't know what else to do. Struggling NSFW. TLDR below. I'm usually more articulate, I promise, but I've been up for 22 hours and my brain is a putrid shit ball of rage and despair so here's the important bullet points. Feel free to read it like green text. My, 32 meters, wife, 25 f, of 6 weeks, 5-ish years together, had been getting distant leading up to our wedding. She played it off well as jitters and planning stress compounded with historical family drama being dredged up. Looking forward to the honeymoon and expecting things to be better after it calms down. 
Her borderline cancels our wedding ceremony. She cut it so short, but I was still happy to be married to her. Honeymoon was it, but not the rest button we, I, had hoped for. Things are 10x worse when we get home and I'm getting really worried about her. We're normally exceptional at communicating but I'm starting to feel like I don't know who I'm even sleeping next to, let alone what's going on with her. Getting really icky feelings about her relationship with someone I formerly considered a dear and valued friend of mine, henceforth known as shit friend. Get in a few fights about her and him, projection and gaslighting to the max. She bails on New Year's with my side of the family, three hours away, fry, sat, son, claiming to need to stay home alone to try to recuperate her dismal mental health. Practically ignores me all weekend, talks on Sunday afternoon and she informs me she's at the beach with shit friend. My trust suitably wavered, I lamented about going through her messages with him before finally caving and praying that I would come out the deceitful asshole after finding nothing but memes and platonic conversation about sushi. Unlocking her phone at 1am and the literal last messages in the convo from a few hours before I got home were a choice selection of her tits and ass in lingerie. Takes 20 minutes to scroll through the last two days of their messages, while ours would fit on a posted note. Doom scroll for a few more hours and send myself copious screenshots including many more photos, sexting from right after our honeymoon, on my birthday, and flirty messages starting months ago. See a particularly degrading diatribe about me from shit friend about laughable efforts to make her feel better about her family problems and general disappointment as a man. Got nauseous at her jovial reply and encouraged him to proceed and woke her up as I sloppily sprinted for the bathroom. Shock kept me from vomiting and I just tossed her phone to her, open on the conversation swearing. Q swearing, crying, apologies, promises, and cold empty stares until my carpool showed up. I'm under no impression. I'm blameless here but I don't see how this punishment fits my crimes. She told me as much as we were able to talk about before I had to go to work and ironically I do believe what she told me. She is bi and poly curious while I am neither and we have both been crystal clear on that from the beginning of our relationship. She did not duck shit friend or engage in anything physically sexual with him. Knowing her feelings and value on sex versus intimacy that honestly wouldn't have been as deep a betrayal to me as everything else she admitted to, so I don't have much reason to doubt her. I end before I can do simple maths and this guy is a manipulative sleazeball of the highest order, preying on a 21 year old when he was 28. He's hiding facts and skewing the story to make the victim look like the villain when he's the real I know how that looks, and how most of what I said will support the above statement, mostly because I did leave tons out, but I figured no one wants to read a 57 package odyssey about the cookening of cerebral 404 so this is what you get. I'll elaborate on or answer anything I have the strength or energy to. Y'all, I lost my wife, partner, absolute best friend, and another friend, in six hours. What the duck do I do? TLDR, this is the TLDR version. Annulment, for example based on fraud. Not necessary. She was so flaked about the whole wedding we still haven't filed. Wow, very glad for that. It's one less hardship for you. Remember, no matter how she gaslights you, she defrauded you with her weak character. Take care of yourself, surround yourself with support, see a doctor if you need to. You can recover. You deserve better. I tried to avoid my bias towards wishing to reconcile cause I wanted to hear all viewpoints. Stings like hell man, but thank you. Filed what? If you have a signed marriage certificate. You married in a lot of jurisdictions. Doesn't matter if you filed it or not. If you are in one of those jurisdictions. Then you will have to get an annulment. You mentioned going on a honeymoon. So if you got a marriage certificate and had a ceremony you are married. Not filing the certificate does not void the marriage. Showing some extra dumbass here but we planned everything ourselves and didn't know we were supposed to get the certificate beforehand. 
no certificate was ever procured or signed. Consider yourself lucky and get the hell out of this situation. She ain't worth it my friend. She didn't even want to marry you. Get out, go get checked for STDs as I'm not 100% sure it wasn't physical. Save yourself years of trust issues, heartache, money for divorce and time. Most importantly time. Go find your person, because she really isn't. People who love you truly, wouldn't do this to you. Good luck. Maybe it's defeatist of me to expect years of heartache either way, so why rope someone else into my shit mess? If I can get through it with her, it could spare someone else who doesn't deserve it from what I feel destined to become, temporarily of course. At least have her fix what she broke, and maybe if she does a good enough job we can stay together, but I'm not putting many eggs in that basket. Nope, your brain isn't working right on this. You're conducting mental gymnastics to find a reason to stay with a boz. Everything including the wedding was based on a lie, your belief that she was someone else. It's not your fault she was a cheating douche. Claiming to be poly by or whatever is just an excuse for being a shit person. Get the hell away from her and get support from your friends and family. No point in making it work with her considering her wedding vows and the actual wedding certificate are non-existent. Walk away from her, she's a dumpster fire. Go find your person, it's not her. Based on other responses I'm leaning toward op is a glutton for punishment. Typically not, but I'm not in a place to disagree with you today. Story 3 28M29F My girlfriend cheated on me, I have decided to end things after a month of deliberation, but the situation has complicated. As per the title, my girlfriend of 5 years informed me that she had cheated on me with one of her friends whilst on a trip away. She had always gone on a lot of trips with people, one on one or in small groups, but I trusted her and had no issues with this. She informed me 3 months after it happened that she had sex with one of her friends in a hotel room. She actually discussed it with a mutual friend first before telling me, to ask whether she should actually inform me, which upset me a bit more on top of the act itself. She claims this was a one-time thing, and nothing like this had happened or would happen again. She was obviously very remorseful, but this was still a massive shock. She had cheated on a past boyfriend, which always worried me a bit, but he was an abusive partner, so I understood to some extent the circumstances. My initial instinct was to break up, but I decided to give it a couple of months on the basis that she would show what I believe to be remorse and steps to change herself. Part of me worries that I initially made this decision based on the complications of a breakup, being that we own a house together and have a dog. I pushed this to the side though, as I genuinely love, loved, her and didn't want things to end. I realized shortly before Christmas that this wasn't working for me, as I can no longer see a future with her. We had discussed marriage and kids, but I can't imagine that with someone who cheated on me. I decided to wait until after Christmas to break up, so as to not complicate existing holiday plans. However, on Christmas Eve her dad was diagnosed with late stage cancer. Doctors have suggested he has around 3 months to live, though it could be less. My girlfriend, who is a nurse, has stopped working temporarily to become a full-time carer for her dad, along with her sister, as they don't really have anyone else who can help. Part of me thinks I should delay the breakup, and one of my friends thinks it would be cruel to break up with her now with everything going on. I think it would be worse for me to now hold off on breaking up with her, as I have no idea how long it is before it would be a good time for it. I presume there will never be a great time, but this timing is particularly awful. I feel terrible about this timing though, and despite what she has done, I would like to remain friends with my girlfriend due to groups of mutual friends, and because she has been my best friend for like 7 years now. I don't want to ruin any chance at friendship by doing something rash, but I think it would be wrong to stay with her when I know I want to end things. She has moved back in with her dad, and is coming home to our shared house once or twice a week currently. Should I break up with her when she comes back for one of these visits? 
I feel horrid, and I don't know if that's the right way to approach the situation, or if anyone can suggest a good way to tackle this. Sorry for any grammatical errors, I'm stressing a bit at the moment, and have written this on a bit of a whim, as my friends who I would discuss this with have got very different opinions. TLDR, girlfriend cheated on me, I gave it a month to test the waters. I now want to break up with her, but her dad is actively dying and she has become his full-time end-of-life career. Should I be waiting for the right time, or just trip off the band-aid? There's never a good time to break up with someone. Emo, better to break up now than to delay it and stay when you're obviously not feeling it. Senior year of high school, my best friend's girlfriend broke up with him. I took him out to talk about it and while we were out, his mother was hit by a car and died. Everyone told his ex-GF that she should take him back, etc etc she did not. It was awful, but now, as an adult, I think she did the right thing. There is never a perfect time. Came here to say this. There'll always be something. Awesome, the first comment was the only good bit of advice from what I've read, so thanks for that. Pretty much what I was thinking, just going to be difficult. Sorry to anyone who has more to say, I won't be checking this account again. Story 4 My, 29F, husband, 30M, has been going out with his co-worker lately, 23F we've been together for 8 years and married for over a year now. He's been working in this company since he graduated from college. I've never heard him talk about any of his co-workers cause he's not really that kind of guy who tries so hard to make a connection with other people. He's very introverted and likes to be in his bubble. Sadly, he's just the type of guy that is easy to approach and talk with. He doesn't know that but I've been with him for 8 years. He's very calm, funny and quirky. These past few months my husband has been mentioning this poor girl. I remembered a lot of bullshit happened to her this year. That's why my husband is trying to uplift her. My husband does not usually do that. He doesn't usually give a duck about anyone. He asked me if I'm cool if he'll bring this girl to a bar and I asked if I could come along. He said that he doesn't really want to stir up awkwardness between me and her, especially because he's trying to comfort her after she had this recent breakup. He showed me her picture. She's really obviously young and very pretty. I've read their conversations and it hurts sometimes that my husband always initiates the conversation. They have been going out every Saturday. I told him I'm starting to feel uncomfortable with this friendship. He said that there's nothing to worry about, that he's just helping her out. It's like a female-female friendship. I don't know what he's trying to point out but everything between them scares the shit out of me. My husband still lets me read their conversation from time to time and the duck, it hurts me that he responds to her faster than me. I hate how he kept apologizing whenever this girl left her to read. It's like I'm ducking reading how my husband begged this girl to give him some of her attention and time and I can't take it anymore. I don't know how I would approach him cause it always ended up that I'm feeling this for nothing that there's nothing to worry about. I told him that I want to meet her and he said, for what reason? I just don't know what to do anymore. I don't even think she knew that my husband was married. Update. After this post I approached my husband that I want him to stop seeing this girl every Saturday unless he would bring me along. He told me that I'm not making any sense that he could just bring me and why I'm making this a big deal. I asked him if this girl knew he's married and based on his reaction I knew that she didn't know he was married. He said that why would he brush the fact he's married on her face. I called him names and he got so upset. I took his phone and went through every single app. He has been messaging her from time to time. I've found out he gave her a very expensive gift that was worth almost $1000. I was hella pissed about it. We had a joint and personal account. A lot of things happened after this post that my brain couldn't process everything. I've threatened him that I will tell this girl I'm his wife and she's being a home wrecker. He said he will never forgive me if he ruined this one and only friendship he had. I told him that he doesn't make any sense that he's being disrespectful to our relationship. 
He said that he hasn't felt love ever since we got married. He never was this happy, excited and content with anyone. I ended up messaging the girl. She said that she doesn't know that he's married and very apologetic about it. He was so mad and left the house. I don't know what to do. I've been calling his phone but he's not picking up. I messaged the girl if she's with him. She said that he's not there. That she just got into a breakup and a lot of things happened to her she doesn't want to be involved anymore. She was so sorry if she could have known he's married she won't even bother going out with him. I've found out she just started working there three months ago. I have so many questions in my mind. Another update. I haven't told any of my family and friends about this. I felt embarrassed, very ugly and pathetic right now. The last thing I want to see on their face is the pity face. I don't want anyone to feel sorry for me. My husband went back around 3 am and we talked about it. He said he could no longer seize me in his future ever since we got married. The reason why he has been working a lot was he does not want me to be around. I asked him why did he wait cause we've been married for a year. He thought his feelings will come eventually that it's just a phase and there's no way his love for me will be gone overnight but every day feels just worse for him. He doesn't want me anymore that he think it's totally over and we could even be friends. He said that throughout our marriage life he moved on. I felt the ultimate betrayal. I told him that we could go for couple counseling and work it out. He cried that he doesn't want to be stuck anymore. It's not about his co-worker anymore it's about what he felt in our relationship. He cried and asked for divorce while I'm crying and begging him not to. I'm so confused and I don't know what to do. I felt like I was a good partner. I asked him about his co-worker if they ever have sex. He said that he genuinely cares and likes her, he's getting to know her more bullshit but he thinks she doesn't see him that way. Nothing happened between them. I asked him about the money he spent on her he said that he bought her a Christmas gift. I am so much in pain that I felt numb that I couldn't believe this is happening to me. And I think this would be my last update. I guess I'll be welcoming 2023 as fucking divorced woman. We hope that by sharing these stories with interested folks like you, we can help people recognize the signs of a relationship in trouble, and avoid so many of these heartbreaking situations yourselves. Have a good day or night. Wherever you are, 